Mulch basins catch a stormwater rain bomb. Warm air holds more water. One of the effects of climate change is more intense rainfall as that water is released, and less benefit as these bursts of stormwater run off. In this video, we see a half-day storm culminating in a short rain bomb that's successfully captured by a small area of mulch basins with essentially no runoff and lots of groundwater recharge. An extremely data-rich view aims to dramatically improve the accuracy and extent of your mental map of how stormwater moves through the air, landscape, soil, and groundwater, whether you are new to the topic or have worked in the field for decades. An accurate mental map is necessary to meet the challenge of making the best use of stormwater as opposed to just letting it run to the ocean. In a separate video, we explain how even a small increase in rainfall intensity results in a sharp decrease in groundwater recharge. And we explain how to compensate for this by slowing, spreading, and sinking stormwater into the soil sponge. This particular stormwater infiltration system consists of mulch basins, terraces, and swales made with care on an ideal site with high perk in a geologically stable groundwater recharge area. The water captured in this video is runoff from two and a half inch storm on almost three acres of catchment. Over 60,000 gallons of stormwater are captured in six hours, a third of it in just 15 minutes. To put that in perspective, this super efficient household uses 80,000 gallons in a whole year for six people and 40 fruit trees. 100 square feet of off-site watershed feeds each square foot of on-site mulch basin. The 1,000 total square feet of mulch basins have an astonishing peak infiltration rate of almost 1,000 gallons per minute. All this is shown in the data dashboard. All footage is synced to the time arrow progressing along the main graph, which displays rainfall intensity in inches per hour and gallons per minute for the whole watershed. Also gallons per minute of site water inflow from roof, landscape, run on inflow from 500 square feet of neighboring roof, 9,000 square feet of road, and 90,000 square feet of steep hillside. This is the headwork system that receives most of the run on. It has one curb cut that is the main stormwater inlet. The first 200 gallons per minute of stormwater goes through a wedge wire screen, then direct to fruit trees through two branch drain systems. The next 400 gallons per minute or so goes through a four inch pipe to a large basin around a tangerine tree, and the rest goes through two gates to the western and eastern stormwater cascades. There's a second curb cut that also brings in a considerable amount of water. This headwork system is shown in action on our data dashboard, which also includes the downspout gutter cam, rainfall radar, and time scrubber keeping time along the graph. I'm Art Ludwig of Oasis Design. I'll take us through the rain events progression and details, starting as the first rainfall reaches the headworks. First drops have just landed on our roof. You can see this first trickle coming down just now. That is from the neighbor's metal roof, running over about 60 feet of asphalt. You can see these pulses of rainfall coming through, kind of like waves in the ocean. At this point, we're getting about the same amount of water from our 2,000 square feet of roof as from 90,000 square feet of catchment. Um, there's nothing from the hillside. This is uh, just the hardscape immediately around us, a little bit from the road. And then this bigger pulse, you can see it's only about 40% bigger, but it generates over twice as much run on. Whoosh. Through this whole period, the infiltration's easily keeping up with the incoming water, even though it's only a very small percentage of the infiltration basins engaged. And this next pulse, even though it's higher than the previous one, it's shorter and it hasn't been raining beforehand, so you can see it actually generates a little bit less run on. This is a, the edge of a large basin, and you can see that it, it's not flooded yet. It just has a few little puddles of water on it. Filtration, the green line's easily keeping up.
sun comes back out, and you can see that it rapidly soaks back into the ground. The runoff becomes zero, and then we've got 60,000 gallons of water into the ground, a quarter of it in 15 minutes. Now we're going to run through that again with a more in-depth look around what's happening at the rest of the site and some explanation. Let's look at the elements of this graph. So this dotted blue line shows the rainfall intensity in inches per hour and also the rainfall amount in gallons per minute over the whole watershed, which are the units that everything else is in. So that may be a little bit confusing. It's an unusual way to look at rainfall, but it makes it possible to directly compare all of these different types of water on the same axis. So this is gallons per minute of rainfall landing on the whole uh, almost three acres of watershed that feed this project. The dark blue is the water that lands directly on our roof. The next medium blue is the rainfall that lands on 10,000 square feet of lot. The barely visible little hint of a line on top of that that you might or may not be able to see is 700 square feet of neighbor's roof. This is 9,000 square feet of road. And then this is 90,000 square feet of hillside. And the difference between the area underneath this dotted blue uh, total rain income graph and the area under these shaded stacked graphs is the water that was lost to infiltration, evaporation, or transpiration and never made it onto our site. This green line shows the amount of infiltration into the soil in gallons per minute. And it's delayed relative to the rainfall because it takes more time to get into the soil. And then this itty bitty red line, which actually is only a number between here and about here, is the runoff from the site. And there's one little down dip here where it gets up to about 10 gallons a minute. Other than that, it's uh, uh, less than one gallon a minute. Well, it's about 4.55 or so in the morning. Just saw the first few sprinkles of rain. I made it through the tree canopy. Wanted to come and see if the setup was still going. First drops have just landed on our roof. And you can see this first trickle coming down just now. That is from the neighbor's metal roof running over about 60 feet of asphalt. Over here, a little setup is capturing the time lapse. Filling up the cistern. It's just about 6 in the morning. Like a hundred percent of the water is going into the branch drain system. At this point, we're getting about the same amount of water from our 2,000 square feet of roof as from 90,000 square feet of catchment. Um, there's nothing from the hillside. This is uh, just the hardscape immediately around us, a little bit from the road. And then this bigger pulse, you can see it's only about 40% bigger, but it generates over twice as much run on. Poosh. This is a, the edge of a large basin, and you can see that it, it's not flooded yet. It just has a few little puddles of water on it.
water coming in at a pretty good clip. It's just a little burst of rainfall. You can see it's starting to get a little bit turbid. And there you can see the rain wedge is showing a bit of water. I just added this second level gate. You can see there's a leakage at a fairly brisk clip through the gates down there is filling up this terrace, or at least starting to, pretty rapidly actually. So the rain's starting to come down harder. Filtration, the green line's easily keeping up. Now things are rocking and rolling. This thing's fully full. The upper basin looks like it's full for the first time. It's headed towards the overflow. And I think it's going to peak more than that as soon as this rain hits. Seriously overflowing. Uh-oh, got a couple of leaks here in the wall. There's one, it's a bigger one. This is moments from spilling. So this thing's charging. Something really alarming is going to happen in a moment here. Uh, the water coming down. So, I'm just going to roll with this. My better judgment would be to go and move the sandbag away from doubling the watershed. getting into the lower area. Sun comes back out and you can see that it rapidly soaks back into the ground. All soaking in just fine. Yep, go for a bowl situation here. And 
Looks like we had zero runoff. The runoff becomes zero. Finally got a little bit of water down into the main lower infiltration. See there where there's clay in the soil, there's some standing water. High flow beat up the ground pretty good. And this thing soaked in pretty darn good. Some mud on top of the mulch. You can see this whole thing filled up. And it looks like we have a little bit of a sediment clogging situation here. And it looks like the sediment trap worked pretty well. It's not that much material that came down considering everything. Still have a large volume of available in the sediment trap. I see some finer sediment vaulted in the basin there. A tiny trickle of water coming through. It's like a, I don't know, a tenth of a gallon a minute or something. It's not a lot of water. And this is the overflow to the street. You can see no water has gone out this way. And then we've got 60,000 gallons of water into the ground in a quarter of it, 15 minutes. Hope you enjoyed all of those visuals. For people who like numbers, here's just a little bit of numbers. Those are the ones that went into this graph. And here's some other graphs showing totals of various things. I think this one's probably the most interesting. It shows the total gallons of accumulated infiltration into the soil over time. 10,000, that took a while, 20,000, then all of a sudden 30,000, and then woof, up to about 66,000. And almost zero runoff from the site. This is 100 or so gallons. There's a lot more analyses that we hope to get to, including what this would look like without these best practices on it. Basically, the graph would go the other way. It would be runoff from those three acres going down like this. All of this used to just go down the curb next to our house and head down to the ocean. So we'd have probably 50,000 gallons of red and then just a very small amount of green infiltration above. Another thing that's interesting to look at is the ultimate fates of this water, how much goes to evaporation, to transpiration by plants, and to recharge. According to our calculations, about 50,000 gallons of this water that was infiltrated will go down below the root zone because it was more than uh, the plants could use or the soil could hold. And then this 15,000 gallons was added to our soil sponge and will get transpired by plants. Well, that's it for our video. Please like it and share it. And please check out our 500 page website, oasisdesign.net, where you'll find a bunch more info and books and instructional videos.